There's a couple of other small additions which are quite nice. Firstly, in the audio mixer. If you, say, wanted to change the panning on this particular clip, I'd stick the cursor over the top of it, make sure I'm on the, the 1VA track, and go to Clip, and I can change the audio level, and I can change the panning. But if you wanted the panning, for example, to be in the center, you'd have to fiddle with this little swirly twirly thing until it got to naught. And I have to tell you the number of times I've done that and I've not been able to get exactly to naught. Yep, that's happened to me quite a lot. If it's 0.4, probably can't tell the difference to be honest, but it's still been quite annoying trying to get that thing to go to exactly naught. Now you can just click on the number and type, press enter, puts it to naught. Do the same with the volume put it to naught. <laughs> you can also drag just like you can with any other Edius hot text field. Small addition, but that would have saved me so much time when I was trying to reset any panning I'd been fiddling around with. There's a new addition to the way the display down here appears, the old playhead here. You go up to settings and then user settings and application, timeline, and it's this thing. Include the preview frame in the out marker really in there for people that use particularly Avid because this is the way that Avid works. And what it does is you tick that and then apply it and absolutely nothing happens to the picture. But come down to the timeline, zoom in all the way down to a frame level and you'll notice a little dotted line has been added. What that's saying is that the frame which is being displayed up there is at the dotted line. Let me go to this join here, make it completely obvious. My playhead is at the end of that clip, but the frame that's being displayed is this one here. Of course, you go to the end of the timeline, you get black up in this window because that's what's being displayed. It doesn't change much about the way EDS works. So for example, if I was to double click on a clip and then insert that clip onto the timeline, that clip has still gone in there where that playhead is. So it doesn't really change very much. It does change one thing though, and that's when you mark an out point or an in point. So let me mark an out point using the O key. The out point goes in there at the dotted line. Change the setting back again, turn it off. Let's mark an out point now. The out point goes at the cursor. It only affects out points, it doesn't affect in points. So for example, with that preference off, and I mark an in point, the in point goes where the playhead is. Let's go and turn that thing back on again. Mark an in point. Oh, and there we are. It actually goes still where the playhead is. The in point doesn't go there. It's just the out point does. The out point finishes at the dotted line. So if you turn that thing on, it will change where your out points go. It means get to the end of a timeline. So my playhead's right at the end of the timeline. I'm gonna mark that as an out point. And what happens is the out point includes one black frame rather than shoving it there and marking an out point and the out point's exactly at the end of the clip. And you might say to yourself, why would you do that? Surely I want my out point to be at the playhead all the time. It's because that's what it does in other programs. People have been moving to ideas from other programs like Avid and they say, well, I'm used to the way Avid works. Can I have an option to have it the way Avid works, please? Yep, you can. It's user settings, timeline, include preview frame in the out marker. If you've been using Edius for ages, you'll probably leave it off. And it's off as a default. But that's really it. That's really a roundup of the new stuff that's in Edius 8.5. Now, it's not everything you get because, of course, Edius comes with another program, which is called Mink these days. It used to be called the Grass Valley Browser. And there's some additions inside of that. I mean, actually, there was some stuff added into Mink when it was first renamed Mink, which I haven't done a video about before. And the latest thing is the ability to export a project in a way from Mink to go to all sorts of programs. So in addition to doing this video about 8.5, I'm going to do a short video which explains the basics of Mink and how it links to Edius and other programs. And in that, I'll talk about this new feature that was added to Mink, which is the ability to do an XML file, which will make more sense when I show that to you. So obviously subscribe to the channel, you'll be told when that one's available or just come back to the channel in a few days, or go and follow me through my Facebook page where I'll also be posting when the video about Mink is available. 
As I mentioned earlier on, EDIUS came out almost two years ago and Grass Valley have always said they work on a two-year cycle, which means we're probably going to be due a new version of EDIUS sometime this year. And now they haven't said when that's going to happen yet, because obviously it's not imminent. From what I've heard, there is likely to be a version 9 coming out later this year, but probably towards the end of the year. And we'll likely have one more free update for EDIUS 8 owners coming out before that happens. Of course, things do change. Of course, when that happens, I'll put up a new video. So subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on the Facebook page and you'll get a notification of when that arrives. That's it for now. This is David Clark from DVC Training signing off.